And good evening. Thank you for bearing with us. I know we're starting a little bit late this evening, some minor technical glitches, uh, but we're going to proceed at this point. Welcome to the June council meeting of the Mayor and City Council, City of Tawnytown. We'll start with our pledge to the flag. I'll ask that Councilman Haynes please lead us in that pledge. All right, thank you, Councilman. Let the records reflect that all members are present and accounted for this evening. We will begin with our approval of the minutes of the May 5th and May 10th regular meetings. I'll entertain a motion to approve. And do I have a second, please? Second. Very good. Any discussion, additions, corrections, anything you found since Wednesday? All right, with a motion made by Councilman Hale, the second by Councilwoman Foster. And no discussion. All in favor of approving the minutes of the May 5th and May 10th regular meetings signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. We shall move on. I'm going to ask the council if they have any conflict of interest on agenda items this evening. No, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, Mayor, I do. Um, under new business, um, item nine, recommendation for hire, director of planning and zoning. Let the records reflect that Councilman Hale does have a conflict of interest on new business item number nine, the recommendation for hire. Everyone else is good. You're not conflicted in any way, shape, or form? Yes, sir. Excellent. We shall move right along. Up for adoption this evening, we have resolution 2021-09, the water allocation for June of 2021. I'll entertain a motion to approve. So moved. And do I have a second, please? Very good. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion for the water allocation? All right. Motion being made by Mayor Pro Tem Vigliotti. Second from Councilwoman Fuller. And with no further discussion, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed, say nay. All right. Next, I'll ask Mr. Weeprick, do you have any updates for your city manager report, sir? Actually, I do. Um, <clears throat> we have been, excuse me, we've been talking off and on for a number of months about some issues at the wastewater treatment plant and um, MDE's uh, letters and so on regarding fines and penalties at the plant. Um, Friday, we received correspondence from MDE that's giving us the standard 14 days uh, to pay the now reduced fines, um, they're considerably down from the initial figure. And uh, I touched base briefly with the city attorney and he suggested that we seek authorization for the mayor to approve paying the fine. Um, we intend to have a conference call with MDE. Uh, that was part of our request with the last go round of correspondence. In this letter, the agency did say they were we're willing to have a conference call on the matter with us. So we'd like to talk through that before we agree to pay the stipulated fines. So we're down to an amount less than $30,000 at this point. And we'd like to, uh, by consensus, authorize the mayor to authorize paying the fines if we do come to that after we have our conference call. But with that 14 day limitation, we don't have time for to wait until our next workshop. So that's the, uh, the new news since Wednesday. The new news since Wednesday. Uh, so the recommendation from city manager and the city attorney is council to authorize myself uh, to pay the fine uh, based on the outcome of the conference call we intend to have, that fine being not more than uh, the amount that they've outlined, which is 27400 27, More than that, um, intention being hopefully get a little more trimmed off of it. Uh, so we're looking to do this by consensus, so I'll just ask the council to say if you consent to such a thing. Consent? Yes. 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 Right. We do have unanimous consent to move forward with that. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Anything else from you, Mr. Weeper? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, we're having audio issues with Mr. Gullo. 
if he does have anything to add, you can call my cell phone. I'll put you on speakerphone. You're okay? Excellent. Thank you, sir. All right. Any questions on departmental reports before I move on? Or the city manager report? No? Okay. Under new business, item number one, we have our monthly financial report. I'll entertain a motion to approve. Motion to approve. Okay, and a second, please. Second. All right, any discussion on the monthly financial report? All right, we have motion made by Councilman Foster, the second by Councilman Fuller. And with no further discussion, all in favor of approving the monthly financial report, signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Very good, moving right along. To the accounts payables, again, I will entertain a motion to approve. And a second, please. Second. Very good. Any discussion on the accounts payables? All right. We do have the motion from Councilman Hale, the second from Mayor Pro Tem Vigliotti. With no further discussion, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Next, I don't believe we have anything to do with the annexation request for this evening, so I'm going to strike that from the agenda. We intend on having a delegation present to us their intentions. Is that correct from the council? Yes, sir. Based on Wednesday night? Okay. Does anyone feel a need to discuss it further before I strike it off the agenda? All right. Therefore, we will strike the annexation request, and we shall move on to the request for the honorary street sign. And I'm going to ask... Councilwoman Foster, what would you like to have happen this evening? This evening, I would like for the council to agree on a design and color of the street sign. Um, Councilwoman Fuller did get us the new prices, which she sent to everybody, which I don't think ever was an issue, the price. They can do both. They can do it two-sided, obviously. So... <laughs> discussion on design and color all right so we'll begin if anyone would like to make a motion and then we can have discussion once we have a motion on the table a point of order do we need to make a motion not just for the sign but specifically for the kind of sign that we want to see yeah the design you know a couple of us like the one with the scroll at the top the mayor liked the plain one so the motion should have enough clarity. We know exactly which sign you wish to do. Okay, I'll move that we right. <laughs> that we select the sign with the scroll. Um, I don't have a preference for color. I, I want what what color do we have now? Brown. Or is it right? Is that correct, Brown? And is that what do you mean have now? Our, our street signs? Yes. Our street signs look our, very look like, much like that. Okay. Yes. So it, if we wanted to do like a blue and a white or a, just. For the sake of rules of order, I'll ask that you make a motion and then they can debate and amend appropriately. Okay. So you can make a motion for what is presented or your own personal opinion, and then we can amend as necessary. Okay, I move that we select the sign with the scroll design in um, blue and white. Is there a second to that motion? I'll second the motion. Right. It has been moved and seconded to select the sign with the scroll on top in the colors of blue, which I assume will then have the white border? Yes. Okay. Any discussion on that? Differencing, difference opinions or anything? Uh, one thing I would suggest is that we could do the two-sided sign out here. We could still do the one-sided sign for the smaller version. Since I don't smaller think should be one-sided, right. yes. Yeah, but there's no reason for that. That's fine. Mr. Mayor, did maybe somebody want to talk a little bit more about the, the meaning behind the, the sign? I think that would, that would be appropriate and in order. Can, okay. we, can we discuss that? 
the meaning behind the sign is that we, Tiny Town was one of the original main streets of which um, this person was instrumental in getting off the ground and working it up until today. That's about it. Okay, so what I'm getting is we're purposely withholding the name of the person. Yes. The person being honored is a former employee of the city uh, who retired recently. And their work on the main street, uh, as well as the streetscape project, uh, it is the intention to recognize their efforts and put up an honorary sign for them. Okay. Um, I'm going to... What's that? For all the good that that did, but whatever. Well, it's... <laughs> people were asking, um, so we can say that much and, and still honor the fact that you, you wish to keep it Okay. somewhat of a surprise. Um, I will ask, because I'm this kind of person, what, what color blue do you have in mind? I was going to make a nitpicky motion to amend based on that. Okay. okay. I wanted to suggest like a dark navy blue, just for legibility. If we're going to go with white, I think it, it's important to have contrast. You want to be able to read it. So a dark, dark blue should be good. Okay. So we have a motion to amend with a navy blue and still with the white border. Yes. Okay. That amendment friendly to the original? Yes, it is. Okay, and to the second as well? Who seconded that? Can we? I did, yeah. Okay, Councilman. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Vigliotti did, thank you. Yes, sir. All right, so the motion, amended motion is now to go with the scroll style sign in a navy blue color and a white border. Any further discussion on that? The, the sign that will be erected along East Baltimore Street would be two-sided. The honorary sign given to the recipient would be single-sided and smaller. And of course, the script would be white. The script would be right, white, that's correct. All right, any additional input from the council? Okay. With that, we have the motion from Councilman Foster the second from Mayor Pro Tem Vigliotti. The motion was amended uh, by Councilman Haynes to do a Navy scroll style sign with white lettering and border. With no further discussion, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. There it is. To the city clerk, was all of that crystal clear for you? <laughs> <laughs> Outstanding. Don't forget the purple polka dots. All right. Number five, we have the request from the city manager to consider hiring outside of the city a firm for a comprehensive plan update. Uh, I know the council asked you to look into some other options, so I'm going to throw it to you and give us what you have. I did, as suggested, I reach out to the Maryland Municipal League. Uh, they responded with uh, a wealth of samples and uh, information that I have not been able to fully digest at this point. Um, and with the uh, MML convention coming up, I expect that there will be some planning consultants um, available to chat with in the exhibit hall. Uh, with that said, what I'm really looking for tonight is just uh, consensus that to move forward with with bringing in a consultant or a third party to work with us on the plan. Uh, dollar figures and such will have to come later. Uh, plans can be tailored um, to to a budget limit to some degree, um, but the range is is tremendous, so I don't really want to throw a dollar amount out until we've kind of fleshed out a proposal at this point. So right now I'm just looking for some direction as to proceeding towards moving a, um, towards hiring a third party, a consultant. I think our first step is for council to give consensus for you to develop an RFP and advertise. Um, and then from there, we should have budgetary numbers available and make the selection. I don't, I don't believe this is eligible for sole source. I think we do have to advertise and accept proposals. Is that correct? 
more along the lines of a of professional services. So we would do a request for qualifications, um, much like we do for a, for a city attorney or, or accountant uh, for auditors, and then um, re review qualifications from firms that submit and and then develop a um, and then request a proposal from from those firms. That's one one way we could do it. We could also develop a more detailed RFP um, that will provide something of an outline of the elements of the plan and specifically what the responsibilities of the third party would be. So there are a couple different ways we could proceed with it. Um, some communities prefer a basic request for qualifications and then they interview a number of, of firms and make their selection that way. Um, others do the RFP route and and just do a bid opening like, like a a capital project would be. So there's a couple ways we can tackle it, but right now I'm just looking for some direction that, yes, we will consider hiring a consultant or not. Okay. Um, seeing the letter that you have put forward to us, uh, you had uh, submit by July 16th. Do you think this information is something that most companies would have ready to go that they wouldn't need a month to put it together? For, for that, yes. I think the, the request for qualifications is something that, that a planning firm is going to basically be able to pull out and, you know, this is us, this is, uh, these are samples of our work and, and so on. Um, this, this would be the the RFQ approach, the request for qualifications. So, right. And if we went that route, we would then interview um, maybe our top three respondents. And, and I'm, not, I'm not close to the idea of developing a request for a proposal that would be more detailed like we do with a capital project. Um, and that can, we can wait and revisit this after the MML convention. Uh, I can come back with a little bit more information but right now I'm just seeking some direction as to whether or not we can go with a, a vendor or that you would entertain going with a vendor. I, I understand if prices come back and they are seen to be prohibitively high, we won't go that route. Okay, so let's, let's stick to that. The request is, is the council willing to entertain using a professional firm to do, to develop slash update our comprehensive plan, that of which is 11 years overdue. Yes. 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 So by consensus, we are willing to entertain that. All right, so I'll, I'll leave it in your able hands to determine our next step. All right. Next, we have the Memorandum of Agreement for National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System. And again, Mr. Weeprick, can you remind us of what you would like from us this evening? No action this evening, um, unless you would like to have a delegation from the County um, Bureau of Resource Management uh, provide additional information next month. Uh, this will be on this month's Water Resources Coordination Council's agenda to finalize the memorandum of agreement so it will be before you for a vote at next month's meeting so if you would like a more detailed presentation um, from uh, county staff uh, let me know and i can arrange that for next month's workshop otherwise we'll have the final agreement before you in july then i'll make a motion to table this until next month all right we do have a motion to table is there a second all right. Any discussion on this? Uh, and I just, I'm sorry, was. No, I was just going to ask what was your problem with wanting to table it? Well, because it's not ready for us to approve yet. No, you want to. Table until next month. Because they still have to have the, the meeting to present it to us next month. Right. So by tabling, we're, we're essentially keeping it on the agenda. We're just holding it off for a month when we have the final information. Okay. Yep. And, uh, Jim, if I may ask, you know, from, from your own perspective, is there anything in the, uh, the MOA that uh, you think needs to be included, needs to be changed, or needs to be 
altered in any way that would better benefit the town? I think that as it's presented, it's a very good package for the city. Um, uh, the city attorney has reviewed it, and while he indicated that he could do some wordsmithing on it, that as presented, it certainly gets the job done. And um, frankly, we'd, we'd love to avoid having um, eight municipal and the county attorney's office um, sort of open this back up because, again, this is a modification of the agreement that is already in place between the municipalities and the county as we are co-permittees on the, on the permit. Um, so I think that as, as presented, it's a, it's a very good package for the city, and I would certainly recommend sticking with it. All right, thank you. I just I wanted to make sure because you deal with this sort of stuff on a daily basis and, you know, your expertise in that area is certainly something worth listening to. So thank you for that. I think based on the information we've been provided, I don't think it's necessary to have a delegation come in. Um, I think your word and that of Kevin Smeek is sufficient uh, to do this. Any other discussion? All right, the motion to table by Mayor Pro Tem Vigliotti, the second from Councilman Fuller. And with no further discussion, all in favor of tabling until next month, signify by saying aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? All right, we'll see it again next month. Next, special event approval. This is a Uniontown Bible Church soccer camp scheduled June 28th through July 2nd at Roberts Mill Park. You'll see in your packets that all of their paperwork is in order, has already been approved by Public Works and the Police Department. So I'll entertain a motion, and I ask that you specify your motion. Motion to approve. Right, and a second, please. Very good. Is there any further discussion? All right, with the motion from Councilman Haynes, second from Councilman Fuller, and no further discussion. All in favor of approving the special event for Uniontown Bible Church Soccer Camp, signify by saying aye. Aye. And anyone opposed? Very good. Next, we have the contract award for Tonytown Memorial Park, the parking lot demolition and construction. I'll entertain a motion and please specify. All right, let's narrow that down a little bit. Or, Jim, I can't find the number here. Very good. So we have the recommendation from Parks and Rec Director is that we award it to HTI contractors the amount of $203,553.75. So I'll ask Councilman Hale, is that what you wish to make a motion for? Very good. That is the motion. Do I have a second, please? Second. And looking for any discussion from the council members. All right. We do have the motion from Councilman Hale awarding the contract to HTI contractors, the amount being $203,553.75. Second came from Mayor Pro Tem Vigliotti. And with no further discussion, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? No. Very good. Lastly, I do wish to make a recommendation for hire for Director of Planning and Zoning. And that recommendation, as discussed Wednesday evening, was to actually make Councilman Daryl Hale the Director of Planning and Zoning. Here at this point, I'd like to recuse myself from this um, discussion and this meeting. Okay. Very good. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Hale has recused himself from this topic and has left the chambers at this point. I will entertain a motion on the hire. I make a motion to hire Daryl Hale as the new Director of Planning and Zoning. All right. And a second, please. Second. Very good. Is there any discussion? Okay. On the and what would be the effective date? Or do you know? 
we will need to work that out. I, I believe Daryl wants to give two weeks to his current employer, um, and we would like to uh, make the start date the, coincide with the beginning of a pay period, so we have a, a full pay period for him, but I don't have the specific date tonight. It'll depend partly on, on of course, when he's able to start. Start date is to be determined. I do want to bring up one more thing that I failed to do so, um, and that was regarding the uh, the package presented to him for your approval as well. Uh, we did present the salary that we budgeted, which I believe was forty six thousand and certain dollars. I don't remember, um, but it is the amount budgeted. The other topic that we discussed, and Council, you can weigh in on, is acknowledging his years of service as a council member is that we also provide him with an additional week of paid time off uh, since he, ha he does have what I think 10 years in as a council member. So essentially length of service earning him an additional week. And if anyone is opposed to that, you may speak up. Okay, any further discussion on the topic? Okay, with the motion to hire Daryl Hale for Director of Planning and Zoning, motion being made by Mayor Portem Vigliotti, the second from Councilman Haynes, and no further discussion. All, excuse me. <coughs> All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 And anyone opposed? <clears throat> All right, that has passed. Councilman Fuller, can you invite Councilman Hale back? Thank you. All right, Councilman Hale, it was voted in approval to hire you as our new Director of Planning and Zoning. Thank you. With that, you will have to resign your seat on the City Council. And I would like that in writing, and it will be effective immediately then. With this, uh, it will create a vacancy on the city council. And per city code, it is up to the council uh, to decide who will uh, fill that vacancy. And I have asked Mayor Pro Tem Vigliotti to come up with a procedure to do so. I have reviewed it, and I approve. And I'm going to ask him at this point to give you an overview. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. The City Council Vacancy Procedure. On Wednesday, June 16th, 2021, the City will publish a notice announcing a submission period for letters of intent for interested citizens to apply to fill the vacancy. The notice will include pertinent information, qualifications such as age and residency requirements, aspects of the letter of intent, asking applicants to tell us about themselves, their skills, their experience, why they want to serve on Council and what they hope to accomplish, a requirement of completing and submitting an ethics disclosure and where the disclosure may be found to fill out. The submission period will last two weeks from Wednesday, June 16th, 2021 until the close of business on Wednesday, June 30th, 2021. Letters will be sent to the clerk and held by Clara until the conclusion of the submission period. At that point, mayor and council will have from July 1st, 2021 until the regular meeting of July 12th, 2021 to review all letters of intent and consider applicants. Um, oh, excuse me, um, July 7th, 2021. A final decision will be rendered by vote by the council during the July 7th workshop meeting with the mayor breaking any tie that might occur. The selected applicant will be notified and upon accepting must be prepared to begin council duties immediately. A formal swearing in ceremony will occur on the July 12th meeting. And there is one point of outstanding business that I wish to consult the rest of council on, and that is how we go ahead and publish and publicize the uh, notice of vacancy. Uh, we have a number of options to do so. Uh, that includes social media, including Facebook and Twitter, a temporary page on the city's website that's specifically devoted to the vacancy application process, where the notice and disclosure forms may also be found. Uh, advertising in the Carroll County Times, a press release to the Times, letter to the editor of the Times, and then another option is to do a direct mailer to every property in town. There are approximately 3,000 properties, and the cost would be somewhere around $1,500, uh, and uh, any other options uh, that council may suggest.
All right, so I'm going to, I'll begin before we have further discussion is since at this point, I'm going to consider Daryl Hale a member of staff. I'm going to excuse him from the meeting. At this point, his, uh, his votes will no longer be recognized. So. Um, so the question from the Mayor Pro Tem is, what all advertising do we wish to do from the council? Do you have preferences? Understanding is some of these will not cost us additional money. Some of these would cost us additional money. I think the easy ones, social media, uh, city website, uh, press release, letter to the editor, all of those are great. I would like to think that something like this in a press release would probably spark somebody to write an article about it, which of course gets us great exposure. Um, outside of that, any advertisements in papers or direct mailers will come with a cost. So, but from the council. I'll uh, kick it off. Um, I think a mailer might be worth it um, if we can comfortably afford the, the $1,500. I'm not in favor of a temporary page on social media. I don't think that's necessary. I think repeating the advertisement just from the posts off of pages that we already have is enough. Um, I think he was referring to a, a page on the city website. It'd, it'd be a page that was just up for this. Is so that what you meant, Councilman? Yes, sir. Okay, then I misunderstood. Then, yeah, that'd be good. I apologize if I wasn't clear enough. I'm That's sorry. That's okay. When you said page, I thought you meant Facebook page, so I took that the wrong way. No, no, no worries, no worries. I think the, the most effective method to get it to everybody would be a direct mailing. My only issue with that is the turnaround being such, I just received something from MML that was mailed February 10th and I just received it. And it was telling me all about the if I were mayor essay contest. Um, that being said, I don't know that the mail is entirely back up to speed yet of getting things out on time. Uh, with regards to direct mail, mm -hmm. the problem seems to be when the mail has to leave Tawny Town to be processed. A direct mailer from Tawny Town would not leave Tawny Town. I think they still send it to Baltimore because they don't have the same machines to process. That's what they had told me previously. The direct mailer that uh, the three of us just did for the campaign. Never left the city. Never left the city. Well, that's awesome. I know previously they actually they'd sent it to Hagerstown. No. And then came back. Because I asked specifically about the mail issues. Okay. And I was told by the printer that that mailer did not have to leave Tawny Town. Okay. Now you can double check in case this is a different animal, but I don't see why. Right. Jim, you'd like I to? I will pose a question. Um, so I certainly understand wanting to get the information out to a broad, a wide number of people, but I would also question who are you seeking? Are you seeking someone who is not already engaged in what's going on in the city? Or are you seeking someone who has been paying attention and keeps in touch with what's going on already? So if you want to basically broaden your search and get resumes from people perhaps who get the direct mail and have not really been paying attention to what's going on in the city, direct mail is the way to go. If you want to narrow your potential candidates so that you don't have as many resumes to wade through, uh, I would suggest avoiding the direct mail and of course the cost associated with that. I think that folks who watch council meetings online, who read the paper, uh, will be aware of the vacancy and certainly putting it out on social media and the city website are good options and they of course are, are things we can do without additional expense and I think that again uh, folks that are interested and paying attention to what's going on in their city will get the word okay something for considering and, and I I don't think the city manager is wrong um, I think some of it is going to fall to current elected officials to ensure that you're helping get the word out. 
If you have anyone in mind that you would like to see in the position, please let them know. If you have social media, please share it on your social media. Um, share it a lot. It's, I think it's important that people understand what is happening. Um, point people to Facebook page, city website, etc. cetera. Um, but taking city manager's point, I understand what you're saying. And I think it is a good point, which just leaves, uh, again, up to everybody to help spread the word. Is the Carroll County Times cheaper than a direct mailer? Yes. Carroll County Times, I think, for an ad about yay big, 250, 300 bucks, I well, think. Well, I think we ought to do, the, I that? think we ought to do the Carroll County Times. Okay, so advertising the Times. Um, we'll do that in addition to the press release and try to hopefully get maybe something on the front page about it. That way people can definitely see it. And you want to go up with the letter to the editor as well, or do you think that's merely redundant at that point if we have a press release and an ad in the Times? I, the letter to the editor is something that would not be representing the city. We'll put it that way. If anyone on the council or associated feels the desire to send a letter to the editor, that is up to them, but they would not be representing the city in doing so. You could check with them, but also the Carroll County Times, I'm trying to think what day it is. I think it's Thursdays. They do, um, it's not a letter to the editor, but it's on that page where uh, different organizations write letters about their organization. It's like that long. And it's signed by whoever it is. The Lions Club is always doing something. Probably like community announcements or something yeah. like that. Yep. You could, uh, the mayor could pen something for that. Right. Okay, we'll get more information on that. It's a day of the week that they run it. And I think it's Thursday. Okay, we can make a phone call and find that out yeah. for sure. But, you know, it's a, you explain the whole nine yards and you sign it and give your credentials and that sort of thing. Okay. So, Mayor Pro Tem, if you want to go ahead and what do you have there? All right. So, we have social media posts, including Facebook and Twitter. We have the temporary page on the city's website. Uh, we have a press release to the Carroll County Times and added to the Carroll County Times, uh, the community, community announcements page in the Carroll County Times. And so far as I've known, we've ruled out the direct mailer, correct? That is correct. Right. Okay. If everyone is satisfied with that, then that ball will start rolling. And I can go ahead and, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, finalize a draft of the notice of vacancy, and I can get that to Clara and Jim, with your permission. Yes, sir. All right. All right, thank you, everybody. Sounds good. Next, I'm going to appoint council liaison ships. And with that, we'll start with, excuse me, Councilman Haynes will go to economic development. Councilwoman Foster will be public works. Mayor Pro Tem Vigliotti will remain with the police department. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councilwoman Judy Fuller will be Parks and Rec, and I'm going to ask her to serve double duty this month and continue with Planning Commission uh, until the next person comes on. Okay. Next, we'll do council member reports. We'll begin with Councilman Fuller. What do you have for us? Um, we continue to get the permits. Uh, we've been. Oh no, it's going to come to me. I had, I had a list. You want us to come back here? Yeah, come back to me. Okay. Mayor Pro Tem Vigliotti, the spotlight is on you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have the police departmental report for the month of May 2021. The total number of dispatched or generate, generated calls for service numbered 444. The total number of citations issued number eight, numbered 88. The total number of warnings issued were 75. The total number of adult arrests were 18. And the total number of juvenile arrests were two. 
Of special note, the department would like to thank the mayor, council members, and Mr. Weeprek for taking the time out of their extremely busy schedules to participate in the force-on-force -force scenario-based training on May 14th. We hope everyone who participated was able to gain some perspective on very difficult law enforcement situations that can occur at any point in time. Your participation in this training was very much appreciated, as is your continued support of our department. In good news, we want to extend special thanks to officers Ralph Williams, Devin Chesney, and Carroll County Animal Control Chief Miller, as well as the Tawnytown Department of Public Works for recently saving baby ducks from a storm drain. It is moments like these that demonstrate the very human side of our very professional police officers and public works members and how they can serve in unexpected but community resonant ways. Also something new this month, I wanna share a new style of report from the police department about training and education. This of course is something that has been forefront in a lot of uh, political discussions, both statewide and nationally. And the police feel it's important to share the sorts of training that the officers and members of the department are routinely and continually undertaking in order to further professionalize their service. Uh, so in terms of the in-service continuing education units, uh, the officers are in the third quarter of in-service training online through Police One Academy. The items assigned during this quarter's training include communication skills, identity theft crimes, leadership, leadership in law enforcement, and leadership and management. On May 14th, officers Leakes, Delospedal, and Chesney completed departmental force-on-force -force scenario based training. Training was designed to reinforce and develop officer safety skills along with judgment and decision making. In terms of specialized training, Officer Myers completed Desert Snow Criminal Interdiction Workshop Training, which is court approved methods and skills to detect various types of criminal activity. Desert Snow is a company that was founded in 1989 and was the first of its kind and helps law enforcement train for criminal situations. Officer Williams completed transitioning from officer to supervisor. Officer Romero concluded child passenger safety technician certification. Corporal Schaefer completed legal contemporary issues for supervisors. Officer Sacadalis completed CPR AED first aid instructor certification. Corporal Schultz and Sacadalis also concluded firearms instructor development. Corporal Schaefer con concluded performance management and employee development. And officers Leakes and Chesney completed advanced roadside impairment driving enforcement training, also known as A-RIDE. And uh, finally this evening, Mr. Mayor, if I may have your permission, I'd like to say a few words because it is Flag Day. It is indeed Flag Day, and go ahead, say a few more words. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> it is Monday, June 14th, 2021. Happy Flag Day. And what a beautiful flag our American Star-Spangled Banner is, not merely for its design, but for all of the extraordinary, wonderful, and exceptional things which it represents. It is a flag for the people of a nation born in war for freedom carried up battle-scarred hills, across smoke-strewn fields, across vast oceans and through the sprawling skies, from one decade to the next, forever advancing forward, ending tyranny, slavery, imperialism, fascism, Nazism, socialism, communism, and which flies defiant in the face of terrorism even now. It is a flag of faith, of moral truth, of freedom, of natural rights, of human understanding. It waves proudly, not merely over government buildings and military bases, but in quiet neighborhoods, over homes, in shopping centers, along highways. It parks at stadiums, over bustling city streets and windswept farm fields, at sacred churches and selfless charities. It adorns clothing, uniforms, vehicles, logos, building facades, and more. It is the subject of our national anthem, of countless paintings, photographs, literature, documentaries, and other forms of art. It is a flag instantly recognizable of freedom, of peace and of courage, of kindness and of compassion, of loyalty and friendship, of the very best of who we are. It inspires, it motivates, it reassures, it is familiar, it is home. It precedes us whatever we may do and wherever we may go. And we are its ambassadors, all of us. All we say, all we do, how we live is a direct reflection on that flag. We are one and the same. There is no other flag like it in the world and no other flag capable of stirring the kind of patriotism and pride which resonate in the human heart in the same way. It is the American flag and it is ours. May God always bless the United States. And uh, finally, uh, to conclude my uh, somewhat elongated report, I want to thank Councilman Darrell Hale for his uh, 
years of service on council, not just in the previous two years, but previously as well. Uh, you know, as I'd mentioned uh, Wednesday night, there's a lot that I've learned from you. I have admired your service. I've admired the friendship that we've developed through these po political uh, endeavors. And I very much look forward to working with you in the future as a member of the city administration and seeing you around town at events and just in general as well. Thank you for everything that you've done for the city and will continue to do for the city. And again, thank you for your uh, example. Thank right. you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Councilman Foster, what do you have for us this evening? Uh, the Economic Di Development Director has been uh, very busy uh, since his arrival and continues to be. Um, a list of some things that he's been involved in. He's developing um, a list of commercial properties that are available in the city so that uh, he can be on board when somebody is looking to open a business. He's working on economic development page on the city's website, and he hopes to develop a relationship with realtors so that um, we can be on board when people are looking for sites in the city. He signed up Tawny Town for the Maryland Economic Development Association and attended a two-day online training. He is waiting to meet with, he's met with most of the Tawny Town businesses, if not all, with the exception of FlowServe and Grassroots Cannabis. Both of them, Grassroots Cannabis has changed their name uh, to Curleaf, I think. Um, both of these companies are undergoing new leadership. So he's waiting for them to have their people in place and hopefully be able to meet with them. I'm sure you've all noticed that uh, Main Street has all these lovely flower baskets. 47 of them were put up. Unfortunately, we've had a little theft on some of them, but I think he plans to replace them. He says he will not be discouraged. Um, he's also making coupon fol uh, folders to send to new home buyers. And in that folder, he wants to include what he refers to as Main Street money, uh, where they would, uh, the businesses would include a coupon that people could use to shop on Main Street. Um, he's been attending the Carroll County Chamber events, and he's enrolled in uh, Leadership Carroll for the year that begins in September. Also, the big news is that uh, with the help of the chamber and Thunderhead, they're planning to resume the business breakfast in September. So. Okay. Thank you very much. It was a great report. <laughs> Councilman Haynes, what do you have for us this evening? Um, I don't have anything public works related, but I want to echo Joe's congratulations, Councilman Hale. Um, I've learned a lot from you over the past two years. I'm really going to miss you up here, uh, but I'm really excited for you, and I can't wait to see what you do. So congratulations. Yeah. That's all from me. All right. I'm sorry. Congratulations, Daryl. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't have it written down. So it was, yeah. <laughs> Councilman Fuller. It's... Start with the congratulations. <laughs> We're very excited for you. Give you the old that a boy. That's right. Um, okay, so we'd like to welcome Christopher Miller, and uh, Brad Brown was not able to make that last meeting, but we expect him to be at the next one. Um, we have still got new homes um, being sold in needs. I think there was 12 plus uh, new permits going out. Um, Ryan Townhomes should have the model home open, we're hoping soon. I'm very interested to see that. Um, there was one other only thing here. Uh, as far as the uh, Ballinger Park stuff, we've kind of had that on hold as we go ahead and get that Roberts Mill pathway taken care of. Um, that's kind of taken priority over everything. So that is up and coming soon. We'll, have, we'll see some improvements over there. 
Uh, I think that is it for me. Okay. Um, a couple brief things. I'll go ahead and start with uh, my congratulations and gratitude, Councilman Hale. Um, it was not the easiest decision to decide to hire you instead of having you up here because I, I've enjoyed having you as a council person. Um, in all the years you've worked for the city, it's uh, you've been a tremendous asset, and I have no doubt you'll continue being that. So I'm looking forward to what you can get done and all the exciting things you're going to learn. Fortunately, you've got Jim right alongside you to bring you up to speed very quickly and then set you off on your own so he can start doing just one job instead of three. So, um, With that, keep in mind, everyone, this Saturday is our wine fest. Uh, that'll be taking place down at the park. I believe it's 11 to 3, if I remember correctly. It's in the middle of the day. Um, come on down. Tickets are available here at City Hall, and I believe they're, they might also be available at Tawny Town Liquors. I'm trying to remember. Anyway, City Hall, you can come buy tickets ahead of time. Um, hopefully everyone come out. It looks like it's going to be a nice day. Who knows with how the weather's changing constantly. 11 to 4, thank you. Um, we also have later this month, for those on council who will be attending uh, our MML Summer Convention taking place down Ocean City. Uh, and what else exciting do we have going on? Before we meet again, we'll get past July 4th. So keep in mind that on July 3rd, we're doing our own Independence Day celebration. Um, this will give everyone a chance to see fireworks twice this year. On July 3rd, you can watch them here in town. Then July 4th, go somewhere else and do it. Um, we're very excited for that with live music and food trucks and kid things, and it's going to be an all day affair. So I'm very excited to have that come, uh, into the city. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun for everybody. Uh, with that, I don't think I have anything additional and I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll move to adjourn. And a second, please. Very good. We have the motion from... Councilman Foster, second from Councilman Fuller. And all in favor of adjourning for the evening, signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Nope. Have a great night.